I suppose what we wanted to do is try and pick up, because obviously the, the point of the day is I suppose to have conversations and then try to bring it down to some possible design solutions. So what we wanted to do was pick up on some of the conversations that have happened earlier on this morning, again, which were quite interesting and quite divergent. And by the difficulty of trying to keep people quiet, so they're obviously quite good conversations. Uh, so we were going to look at some aspects to do with um, multi-stakeholder <coughs> approaches to supporting eco-design. Um, and possibly taking it from the perspective of our work and the work that we actually do in Wales. So I'll just, I'll, I think I'm going to speak for about 10 minutes and then I'll hand you over to Frank and Frank will present the challenge that we're going to set for for everybody. So just so you know, um, Wales is the bit in orange. Uh, we're actually based in Cardiff. Uh, and we're a small applied research centre. Uh, we receive core funding from the Welsh Assembly Government. Uh, to do applied research, but really what we do is we try to work with policy makers, uh, with industry and with educators to sort of see what's the best way to intervene to make sure that eco-design becomes either mainstream or part of design practice. Uh, and Frank might speak a little bit later on but about that principle about for us, it's not necessarily about how you define it, but it's all about good design. So whether you call it eco-design, sustainable design, uh, it's all about good design. So that's just about who, who we are. I um, don't want to go on too much about the marketing bit, but just to give you an idea, we're a small organisation, but we work with different types of companies, generally SMEs. Uh, we're not sector specific, um, so we, we look at you know, what are the types of companies that we actually want to work with, uh, from food and drink right through to low carbon technologies and uh, manufacturing. But that's the marketing bit, so I won't, I won't go on too much about that. Uh, so we sort of said, okay, we know there's going to be a lot of discussion this morning about tools and methodologies. Uh, for how you actually apply and how you do, how you do eco-design or sustainable design. I think it came up in the conversation earlier on, there was the terms co-creation, uh, participation, you know, the, the idea of people, who's actually involved, all that type of stuff, and the idea of stakeholders. So we said we'd try and you know, start the conversation about what, you know, what does this mean about multi-stakeholders and who are the stakeholders, and uh, you know, what, what, what does that actually mean? Uh, for, I suppose for designers it's quite intuitive you know, we, we all assume that design is an interactive process. Even by looking at today, I mean, this is, this is a multi-stakeholder process. Uh, you know, and I think as, as designers, that's the way we sort of feel design should be. It's about pulling in ideas from as many sources and, and channeling it through into a good design solution. Um, but in terms of the work that we do, where we're interested in, I suppose, intervention and how you possibly change the route of design or change the design practice, uh, it's quite interesting to look at sort of the different levels of what a multi-stakeholder process might mean. I think initially on the sort of the first level, we would always think about, you know, the design process and the stakeholders being internal to a business. Uh, the idea of, you know, the stakeholders being, you know, the MD, the financial director, the design team, uh, and people working on the shop floor. And again, that's just an interesting way to look at this idea of multi-stakeholder. What does that mean in that, co in that particular context? And again, we can kind of sort of see in that type of concept, you know, this is, might be a little bit strategic, but we think about you know, design being in sort of the, the translation space between strategy and implementation. So is it, you know, is it design's role to take, take on board the views of the stakeholders in terms of the MDs, the, the shareholders, uh, and those types of people, and then translate that into something that aligns with the, the interests of the stakeholders in terms of people who have to implement it. That could be actually just the people on the shop floor, who actually has to make the product, who has to deal with the product, but also who has to use the product. So it's that idea of who, who are the stakeholders within that particular system. Uh, on, an, on another level, this, you know, this idea of, I think the, the conversation came up earlier on about you know, global supply chains and you know, participate, you know, participatory approaches to sustainable design. And then it's quite interesting to look at in certain product systems or certain, certain products, who are the stakeholders in this? I mean, this is just an example of a uh, electronic toothbrush, which is a relatively simple product. And what, it's, what, this, what this picture has done is mapped out you know, the locations in the world where the components for that particular product have actually come from. Uh, it's, kind of, it's a simple product, but you know, we talk about food miles, but you know, within this product, you know, by the time it reaches its final point in terms of assembly and distribution, it's sort of traveled, I think it's like 27,000 kilometers in terms of the comp its components. And the question that would come up there then, obviously in terms of the environmental impact, but also who are the stakeholders in the various positions, in the various locations, in the various countries? H how would somebody within Malaysia who's involved in you know, building the PCBs, what, what's, their, what's their stake in the, the sustainable design of electronic toothbrush? And how, how would a sustainable design process go about engaging with those people across, across the globe in terms of the different stakeholders? 
if we believe that that's what a sustainable design process should actually be. So again, that's just another way to sort of say, you can have a look at the stakeholders in terms of inside the business, but also the global stakeholders. Um, just wanted to quickly just pull it back in terms of, uh, so it's an area that I'm interested in in terms of my re some of the research that I do, is trying to look at the, I suppose, look at this idea of multi-stakeholders, but from a regional perspective. So looking at it from a perspective of a country like Wales. You know, the, the, first, the first one was, you know, within the company globally, and then, you know, to have a look at well, who are the stakeholders within a region. Uh, we talk about regional innovation systems. Uh, what that really means is just, it's about identifying who are the actors and who are the people who have a stake in innovation and design within a particular region. And what are the types of interactions between those stakeholders? And is there a way that we, as an organization, or as, as part of a, a larger multi-stakeholder group, can intervene within that system to change the way design actually happens? And just, this is just an example of a, of a product. Uh, I think Frank spent a lot of time working with this company a number of years ago. You can, <laughs> I don't know exactly when it was. But this is just, just, just as, as a way of illustration, this, this whole idea of innovation systems and who are the stakeholders within the innovation system. This particular product, it's a, you can, I don't know the science, but basically it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a product for testing samples of water. It's a scientific analytical piece of equipment. And this is developed uh, initially a sole trader, micro, micro, uh, uh, micro SME uh, designed and developed this product and then put it out onto the market. And we, sorry, we can look at it from uh, obviously a number of different perspectives, but if, in terms of the conversation today, it's about you know, this issue about you know, who, are the, who are the stakeholders within the development of this particular product, who has the responsibility for sustainable design, and who can actually guide the, de you know, the development of this product so it becomes more sustainable. And again, we, I think we always automatically think that when we look at a product, that all the innovation and the knowledge has happened either within the business or within a kind of a small uh, group of people around the business. But this, I just wanted to map out very simply uh, it, it gets, does get co quite complicated, but just trying to map out, so to say, if we look at that product in the context of the region that it's been developed, the region being Wales, who, who are all the various stakeholders that have actually had a play and had some kind of form of a, of a role in the development of this particular product? Uh, obviously, the, the, the square in blue is the company, uh, and all the various squares around it are showing those types of, the either or the organisations, the funders, the suppliers, the customers, the, you know, the more direct people who are involved in product development in terms of tool makers. And if you start to look at product development, design, manufacturing in this particular way, we ha have to ask questions about you know, what, are the, what are the kind of relationships and interactions between these various stakeholders. And if we're sort of saying we want to make, you know, maybe Ireland, if we want to, ha you know, to be uh, a sort of a sustainable design or an eco-design-led nation, who are the types of people that we need to interact with? And how do we actually f maybe change those relationships between the various, the various actors within that particular innovation system. Again, that's just, just, just by way of illustration. Um, and because that's part of my research, I could probably spend all day talking about it and I could bore you to absolute tears about the, uh, the whole idea of innovation systems and what it means for, for design intervention. But there's just some kind of principles that I suppose just as part of starting the discussion about multi-stakeholder approaches and what they actually mean. There's always a lot of talk about multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary, inter, intra and interdisciplinary work. But the basic idea of multi-stakeholder you know, multi systems is that they're multifaceted. They're made up of a number of different components, either people or organisations. And some people think you might, it might be actually about making a jigsaw, but maybe it's not really about putting it into a perf perfect unison. But just to recognise that it's all about uh, d different groupings. And again, from the conversation this morning, it was quite interesting that part of this idea of taking multi-stakeholder approaches is, is about if you're engaging with other people, quite often, you know, people who are joining that multi-stakeholder group have to start negotiating the language, trying to understand what, you know, if somebody, if I'm talking about sustainable design or innovation systems, you know, do, who are the people that we're engaging with and can they understand what we actually sort of say? Uh, we try to sort of get away from too many strict definitions and just sort of try to get to first principles about what the you know, what the issues actually are. Um, there's a lot of stuff about, if you're, if you're talking about a multi-stakeholder group, either within a business or within a region, you know, that it infers that there's some element of, I suppose, either management or control of that, you know, that multi-stakeholder grouping. Uh, and I'm quite interested in that sort of that interplay between control and power within, you know, multi-stakeholder groups. And it can start asking questions about, you know, the value